Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's installment of Council Talk with me, Mark Garman, the editor of the Vallejo Independent Bulletin, and Anne Carr, international woman of mystery and specialist in the high-wire act of political intrigue, broadcasting live from the townhouse bar and the applause go wild in beautiful downtown Vallejo. We were out of there quick tonight, Anne. Yes, we were in and out. We had a, some new hires, a proclamation, a couple ordinance, but a Binksky, and we were gone before 8 o'clock. Yay! Yes, March 25th, a night that will be remembered with joy. <laughs> because we've been there past midnight on many occasions. Yes, so yes. Um, our bottoms weren't numb when we left, which yes. is a rarity. <laughs> exactly. So we had a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of firefighters hired and a few other staff people tonight. Right, so 11 total new hires in the city, nine firefighters, somebody new in IT, and then a new supervisor for the Vallejo Housing Authority. She's got loads of experience in code enforcement, housing, she's worked all over the Bay Area, and she's from Vallejo and has lived here all her life, so quite a prize for us. Nice, nice change in, in Vallejo that we're, we're hiring people instead of seeing them leave. Yes, and um, one of the things that a lot of people have said about Vallejo staffing is they'd like to see more people who are actually from here who can really understand what it's like to live here and ostensibly who are more committed to the quality of life here in Vallejo. So that was a big prize. So the proclamation tonight, the big one was a proclamation around the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act, and Vallejo will be the center for and, celebrating that. And. I often feel like I'm lost in a wilderness. <laughs> well, interestingly, so the, there's going to be a festival September 3rd through 6th, and it's called Visions of the Wild. And maybe you should be a consultant to that festival, Mark. You might have a lot of insight for them. <laughs> I might just get lost. <laughs> so there's going to be art. There's going to be parties and speakers. And uh, fun for us in Vallejo, there's going to be a Vallejo Ranger Station open on Georgia Street, 419 Georgia Street, and it'll be open during Farmer's Market, so if you want more information, you can go in there and check out all the wilderness programs. And the wildebeest. <laughs> and the Which wildebeest. used to run wild. No, they didn't. Well, maybe not in Vallejo, but we can look at pictures. We can look at pictures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else did we have? We had uh, Community Forum. Well, we had community forums, so there were a couple people tonight who showed up who were not happy about some new regulations in the Housing Authority relative to subsidy levels. Right, and these were federal HUD housing and urban development changes, um, which really are not within the purview of the city council, so there's, there's really not much they can do, and what it seemed to me, well, what has happened is that the, the, the vouchers and the parameters, in other words, people are basically getting shoehorned into in, either have to pay more or have a smaller place. Right. These are regulations that have come down from federal HUD, Housing and Urban Development. They were published or they were taking effect as of November last year. Vallejo has absolutely no control over them, and there is just no... Um, there are no exceptions in these rules. And the main rule is that there need to be two people to a bedroom in any subsidized unit... If that's not the case, then the tenant has either the choice of moving to a, a, a smaller apartment or paying more rent. That's right. basically it. And um, if, some, if people are kind of caught in the middle on this and maybe unawares, they need to work with the Vallejo Housing Authority and, and Putney, the manager there. Right. And it's, again, it's federal, so the city council has got very limited ability to do anything, really. I mean, it's not their, it's not their purview. Right. Moving right along, we heard from uh, our friend Stephen Hallett uh, from the Baird Rustin LGBT Democratic Club. Right. So uh, apparently Mayor Davis had challenged Stephen that uh, the city would be willing to look at measures to try to improve our MEI. Now, what is that, you ask? It's the I'm asking. <laughs> it's the Municipal Equality Index. And Vallejo scores pretty low on that index um, relative to all Bay Area cities and even other California cities. And so Stephen said he's going to come back to the council with a couple of suggestions, but one specific one was an invitation to the mayor to support the Mayor's Freedom to Marry program. 
and uh, Mayor Davis didn't have any comment on that particular item. I, I think he will see what happens, and I don't want to speak too soon, but I suspect he may have a challenge getting the mayor's signature on that one. <laughs> That I'm, I'm, I think you're right on that one. So another community forum speaker from tonight I thought was very interesting, a woman by the name of Kay Flavelle. Uh, she is from New Zealand. She's had an artist residency program here and in New Zealand for the last 12 years. And now she says she's going to spend the next 10 years devoted to Vallejo. And she's starting a think tank Vallejo visioning process or program called Transforming Vallejo, Mare Island 2014 to 2024. And she wants to create a shared multicultural vision for the city that uh, inspires people, gives them hope and pride. She's having a workshop of some flavor on Saturday, April 12th. Well, you know, I would say to Kay, jump on the bandwagon, ma'am. We've got wonderful things happening in the downtown with the arts community. All kinds of stuff happen in Vallejo and the more the merrier. Yeah, so we're all doing what we can to create a new Vallejo. And so we welcome that kind of energy. All right, and moving along to the action calendar, which really was not the most fast-paced action, but it was fast-paced, actually. Yes, it was. It was, it was lots of action. We were in and out. Bam. Bang. Wow. <laughs> so, people are, we got to stop. People are, you're going to give people the wrong idea, Ann. <laughs> It really was just a meeting. Well, I am a political pundit, you know. You're, yes, yeah. a high-wire artist. And a high-wire artist, too. Yes. I got a promotion this week. So uh, one of the things on the action calendar tonight was administrative with respect to the Neighborhood Law Program, which has been pretty successful at helping to get action on neglected properties in town. We got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, we got more than one. So the big thing was to allow the city to release some of its own liens so that the city could take some of these properties into receivership. Right, and it seems there's there are a lot of situations where the liens that have stacked up against a blighted property are worth more than the property. So it kind of puts it frozen in this limbo where if it's taken into receivership, there's no way to get any money out of it. It's a loss because by the time you pay the liens, you've paid more than the property is worth. So this would allow the city to take some of those liens off, put the property in receivership so it could be moved along down the line, taken uh, possession of, and potentially get some money out of the thing. Right. Bottom line, I think the neighborhood law program is taking a pretty pragmatic approach to these things, and it's a welcome change. They're getting a lot of changes in town. They've had 317 files open since they opened last January 2013. They've closed 135 cases, and in a lot of neighborhoods across town, people have seen some real action and real changes as a result of their efforts. So um, we, we welcome supporting them and what they need to do to get results because otherwise some of these project properties have been in limbo. Uh, the closing thing on NLP is that apparently they have right now 18 priority cases in active litigation. So good on them. They're so getting the city good attorney job Claudia Quintana and all the folks at the neighborhood law program have been busy and active. Yeah. And oh, by the way, this is something that's been funded largely out of Measure B. So that's something where we're seeing uh, direct benefit from those Measure B revenues. Right, and the other piece of business that was uh, uh, examined, voted on, and moved forward unanimously is parking in downtown. Bottom line, you're going to have to pay 20 bucks to park in the city lots downtown. 20 bucks a month. 20 bucks a month, yeah. and if you can you buy monthly. up to 12 months of parking in advance. Uh, so this is really with respect to city-owned lots. So you can still get day-use parking at the Vallejo station near the ferry terminal, but in other city-owned lots, they're going to a permit system, and you can get your permits either online or in person. And uh, there was a lot of verbiage behind this. There was a 100-page report on parking, which is about 98 pages more I, than most people want to read. Amba. I could not, I could not <laughs> park myself in front of that. You and, couldn't park it. And I'm glad you were there to do it for me because, yeah. Yeah. Well, that and there's the other thing that's that is worth mentioning is that there's going to be more enforcement. So, you know, no more free ride on the parking. If you if you park and you leave your car there past the deadline, there's a chance you're going to get a ticket. So watch out. Yeah. Apparently, there's been a skate on the parking time allowances that uh, the city is looking to tighten up on. 
Um, if you look at their parking analysis, apparently people are, have been saying roughly double the amount of time that the parking signs allow. So that's likely to change. So be forewarned that if you see a cute little note on your windshield, it may not be a, a note from your friend. No. Ultimately, though, we still have a lot of parking in Vallejo. It's, we do. It's the day that there's not enough parking in the downtown and I have to circle the block to find a parking space will be a moment of joy because that will mean <laughs> it's busy down here and that's what we want. It'll be a welcome change, yeah. And that's really about all there was as far as city council. It, it was that's an it. easy meeting tonight. Thank right. you. <laughs> so the other knickknack we wanted to touch on uh, this evening uh, it relates to an article that's published in the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com and the title is The Best City Council Special Interest Money Can Buy. Uh, you can check it out online but uh, in a nutshell this article written by Paul Norberg also known as The Gadfather. Uh, Paul's a great guy. He's a retired chief financial officer and uh, looks at a lot of the numbers that are propelling the politics that give you an idea as they say follow the money if you follow the money you will understand the soft white underbelly of Vallejo or really any politics right it's always about following the money and Paul has done a great job in tracking the money from the last 2013 City Council campaign and there was a lot of outside money in the election, so right. a lot of people outside Vallejo invested to get a certain result. Absolutely, and the main driver uh, behind those, uh, the way that money was spent was a political action committee called Jumpstart Vallejo, uh, which comprised special interest groups both from inside Vallejo and outside Vallejo. Uh, Jumpstart backed council members Summers, Du, Malgapo, and Verda Liga. Um, Summers didn't get elected, but we've got three candidates uh, sitting on the city council. Um, du, now du, now she's Du Costa, she got married. Uh, Malgapo and uh, Rosanna Verderaliga, who received how much money in? Give me the so, breakdown. Wow, the breakdown. So the Jumpstart money total that they raised, or total of expenses from Jumpstart was $142,000. Of that money, $88,000 was from outside Vallejo. So uh, heavy donations from the California Realtors, Board of Realtors, a lot of um, basically unions from other towns in investing in Vallejo and hoping to get a result. Not to mention quite a bit of money dumped by the California Association of Realtors. I think they gave 8000 to the PAC and then to uh, Council Member Malgapo and uh, do now do Costa, um, they gave them sixteen thousand a piece, approximately sixteen each. So 16. a total of about forty thousand dollars from the California Association or Board of Realtors, whatever their their group name is. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I mean, in comparison, what what's the total for uh, JumpStart? Total amount of money uh, spent on the campaign by JumpStart as compared with independent candidates well if you look if you look at the campaign totals for the jumpstart candidates plus the jumpstart pack that comes up to two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that's a hell of a lot that's of money that's a isn't lot it? of money considering well look at how few this very small number of people that voted in this last election right and if you look at the money for the grassroots candidates so that would be katie meisner joanne shively and liet meisenheimer their total came to $82,000. So they were outspent about three and a half to one. Yeah. And uh, that makes a big difference, obviously. Well, when you figure uh, someone gives you a big pile of money, it's, it's usually not hello and goodbye. It's hello and hello again, and I want you to vote a certain way. And, uh, you know, right. i.e., you know, think about something like uh, an ordinance to register landlords so we can get a handle on some of the bad landlords in town. Um, I, I guarantee you that the California Association of Realtors might not be all that hot on something like that. Right, right. And what's interesting is um, in Vallejo the politics are pretty blatant. Now if, if you talk to someone at the state or federal level they talk about influence in Vallejo, they talk about buying results. If we donate to you, will you stay bought? And so they don't expect just influence and access. They expect to get certain results. 
So it'll be interesting to see as our contracts come up for renegotiation what kind of impact all these donations have. Absolutely. So keep your eyes on the prize, follow the money, and we will keep you informed. If you want more information, uh, check us out at the Vallejo Independent Bulletin. You can read the full article, look at the documents, see who got what, and get a handle on it. You can check us out at IB, letter I, letter B, IBVallejo.com. Thanks for listening, and that's all for tonight. And over and out. Thank you. Good night, Ann.